the trials faced by the people of truth, the people of God, are not something new in human history. Rather, they are the sunnah or the universal law of God, which he enacts. He enacts to purify and to elevate his select elite believers, knowing well that they will endure patiently throughout these trials, whereby they will be purified, whereby they will attain God's pleasure and his countenance. He tells us in chapter Al-Ankabut, the spider, Alif Lam Mim, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ He says, to, do the people think that they will be left to say, we believe, and they will not be tried? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ But we have certainly tried those before them, and Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful, and will surely make evident the liars. All of the proponents of faith and monotheism throughout human history have been tried. And their trial has been commensurate to their level of faith. Their faith is high, then God tries them with a severe test, knowing well that they will pass such a test and trial. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, the Almighty, He tells us of our father Ibrahim, Abraham, that he was commanded to leave his faith or be cast into the fire. And he refused and was catapulted into the fire. And there Allah caused the fire to be cold and peaceful for him. And, it, and they were his most blessed days in the fire. Jesus, Isa who was plotted against, his uncle, Zachariah, his cousin, Yahya, John the Baptist, who were both stoned and sawn in half to leave their faith. And yet, they remained resolute and firm upon their principles and on their faith. God tells us of Ashab al ukhdud the people of the trench, monotheistic Christians in, the, in Yemen, before the advent of Islam, who were cast into a fiery trench to leave their religion, and none of them, and none of them wavered, none of them substituted their religion. And he tells us, cursed were the companions of the trench, containing the fire full of fuel. When they were sitting near in it, when they were sitting near it, and they, to what they were doing against the believers, were witnesses. And they resented them, not except because they believed in Allah, the exalted in might, the praiseworthy, to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and Allah, God over all things, is witness. Of course, the viciousness of this morning's attack in New Zealand, in Christchurch, took us all by surprise. It took us by surprise, the savagery, the sadism of the attack, its nature, but let us not be surprised. For those who are enemies of mankind, the enemies of faith, the enemies of justice, the enemies of monotheism, have adopted the same manners throughout the ages. They do not observe any sympathy or humanity with the innocent. And God tells us in chapter 9, they do not observe concern of any pact of kinship or covenant of protection. So nothing prevents them. No rule, no law, no decency stops them from taking the lives of the innocent. And they, and they innovate methods to take the lives of the innocent. What we do find solace in my respected brothers and sisters and what this catastrophe, this calamity, this massacre has in terms of a silver lining is the condition in which our brothers and our sisters and our young children met their fate this morning. 
For the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, there is no other believer who dies on Friday except that he will be resurrected with Allah having expiated his sins. Allahu Akbar. And they died in wudu, in a state of physical and ritual and spiritual purity. And they died whilst in a state of worship, as you are my respected brothers observing the Friday prayer. They died in Allah's house. And they did not die only, but they were murdered. So they were murdered in the cause of Allah, a means for shahada. Allah gathered for them all of the means to attain his pleasure, to attain his countenance, to attain his forgiveness, to attain his mercy, to attain the lofty ranks in paradise, the company of the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and the truthful. This is solace for them, for their families, for their loved ones and for their friends. This is God's promise. And we have no doubt as to the fulfillment of God's promise. It was, of course, a massacre and a catastrophe by every measure. A crime with no equal. A terrorist attack that shook a nation and the global community. And this escalation, my dear respected brothers and sisters, of violence against Muslims is more than just a worrying trend. It's a realization of the real and imminent threat that poses our security and the security of every other vulnerable group in our society by the growth of the increasingly violent far right. They can no longer be labeled as lone psychopaths, as deranged or disgruntled. Rather, they are sane and they're cruel and they're calculating and they're sadistic and they are organized. They aim to galvanize their efforts with the proponents of their evil causes on a global scale. These people must be dealt with the full force of the law. And their threats should be taken seriously and not lightly. Their platforms should be targeted and their supporters exposed and scandalized. When so-called social commentators can get away with calling immigrants and Muslims cockroaches, or a scourge, or a drain on resources, and other such derogatory remarks. What they do, in fact, is they dehumanize entire groups of people, dehumanizing them, therefore mandating their murder, justifying the targeting of those vulnerable groups, justifying the oppression of those groups, as they are not human, they're but cockroaches. And when politicians and sections of the media use the same inflammatory language as Islamophobes, as racists, as the terrorists, when they speak about Muslims or immigrants or other minorities, they further fuel the narrative, which perpetuates the notion that Muslims are the other, that we are an exception to the, to the normal law-abiding uh, well meaning citizens of this great country and of the global community, in fact. That we are the threat, that we are the enemy within. These narratives fuel people of weak minds and weak resolves to target the vulnerable, to target the innocent. Where before, threats to blow up mosques using rocket launchers were considered as ramblings of a disgruntled, unemployed, unhappy, depressed individual. These threats now are real. Where before, instead of trying such an individual for terrorism or intention to commit an act of terrorism, they were let off lightly. Now there must be a rehaul, there must be a rethink, a reconsideration, a wake-up call for those in power, for those of influence, to know that these threats are no longer ramblings, but instead they are calculated plans 
to target vulnerable, innocent groups of people, and specifically the Muslim community. This massacre, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this callous attack, this, this terrorist attack was the result of complacency, was the result of trivializing the concerns of the Muslim community, of showing indifference towards their fears and their anxieties. At times, even a blatant show of support to Islamophobes by giving them a platform, a column in a newspaper, uh, a meeting in the Houses of Parliament. And the calls and the cries for this to be investigated have fallen on deaf ears. Those who show indifference and those who take no action will at some point have blood on their hands. And this is what we fear. The attack that took place this morning in Christchurch on the two mosques in Christchurch, in the two mosques in Christchurch, indicate an upward trend. It starts with an intention, and then the vocalizing of that intention, then a threat, then an action. That action is then imitated, and after the imitation, there is but escalation. And this was shown to be the case. This was shown to be the case here nationally, and on a global level that terrorism has no religion, a claim we have repeated time and again, that there is no creed for terrorism. It is an ideology of hatred, an ideology of dividing, an ideology of violence. And that was shown to be the case in the massacre in the synagogue in Pittsburgh last year. And this upward trend must be nipped in the bud. It must be nipped and our call is for those in positions of power, in positions of influence, in positions in government, in certain sections of the media, to take responsibility, to know that every word that is said has an impact, has an effect. And there are people who are influenced by such words and by policies and by indifference and complacency, and where the blood of entire groups of people, namely Muslims, is considered cheap compared to other blood. The dignity of Muslims is considered cheap compared to the dignity of other groups, unfortunately. But as we say this, the human race is unrivaled in its resilience and its resolve in the face of crisis. In the times of difficulty, the best amongst us rise to the surface. They show leadership. They show support for the weak, for the oppressed, even at their own expense. Those of principle stand side by side with those who are targeted unfairly. And this has been shown to be the case time and again with an outpouring of support on a global level and at a national level. And of course, we pray and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire patience and endurance to those who have lost loved ones and friends and family in the attack this morning. We as a race of humans will not be divided. We as a global fraternity of Muslims shall too not be divided. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وبعد I conclude my dear respected brothers and sisters with a reassurance a reassurance that everything that is to afflict us is known by Allah سبحانه وتعالى that if all of mankind and the jinn were together in one place to benefit us, they will not benefit us with anything except that which Allah has recorded for us and preordained. And if all of mankind and the jinn were together to harm us with some form of harm, they will not harm us except by something that Allah has preordained and knows, and knows in his infinite and divine knowledge. Therefore, we should 
be reassured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ally of those who believe. He is the ally of the faithful. And for us not to fear, for us not to put a halt to our lives, for us not to waver or to change, for us not to hesitate in attending a, 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 a mosque for worship such as you have done today. That is what the extremists and that is what the terrorists and that is what the Islamophobes and the racists, that's what they want for us. They want for us to live a life of fear. But we will say, we will say no to fear and we will say no to intimidation and we will say it proudly and loudly and we will say it peacefully knowing that the law is on our side and that the law is against those who wish to perpetrate crimes against any individual. The sanctity of human life is preserved by Islam, by every religion and by every law. The challenge is for us to enact those laws and to equate them across the board for everyone, that everyone should enjoy a life of dignity, a life of justice, a life of uh, comfort, and to live humane lives where they are ensured that they shall be protected by the powers that be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant our brothers and our sisters who lost their lives the highest rank in paradise. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant their families patience, to grant them the resolve to endure throughout this trying time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite New Zealand and its people and for them to stand united against hatred. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reconcile between our hearts and for us to find common ground and to act upon that common ground.